guys welcome to the case scenarios here we will be discussing a topic in a clinical way so that you get to know how to approach a clinical case because you know uh, according to the new trend more and more questions are now coming conceptual type analytical type so there is actually a lag in the students that how we should approach these type of questions and come up to the right answer so let's get started look at the question we have 32 year old men complaining of right eye pain and discharge his symptoms begin acutely on awakening in the morning he uses the extended wear contact lenses and has difficulty removing the lenses the last week now his past medical history is significant for obesity chronic back pain asthma and acid reflux disease on examination we have got a very very important finding now this is really important because this will help us in reaching a concrete diagnosis we have got a thick globular yellow discharge at the medial corner and the lid margins also the cornea is edematous hazy and ulcerated with the scleral injection shown in the image now this is your double advantage they are telling you the findings and also giving the image now this could be as in two ways also they could give you the image and they will not specify what are the findings of this image or the second way is they will give you the findings and they will not give you the image now fortunately here both are present but you yourself should be able to comprehend the image if it's not given in the question now what they are asking is what is the most probable diagnosis right so first of all how to approach such kind of a question always see the age of the patient and the gender of the patient so you have a 32 year male whose main complaints are pain and discharge now the moment you hear discharge what do you think of that means there is some infection if you remember we do this in classes also that discharge is always suggestive of infection if they want to ask you about the allergy they will always say itching in that okay so that's why you are thinking something uh, which is uh, infective etiology because it is causing pain as well as it is having the discharge plus the symptoms are acute so they are telling you about the onset there is sudden onset there is also sudden onset so this thing which has occurred in the patient is of sudden onset it is a painful condition uh, most probably it's an inflammatory condition because it's causing pain as well as it's an infective condition because it is causing discharge so are you understanding how to comprehend each and every word of the case scenario and even if you miss one word you are going to lose something all right now see you have a very very important risk factor which they have given and that is the use of extended wear contact lenses the use of extended wear contact lenses so something is happening in the cornea so if you look at the examination findings they say that the cornea is edematous it is hazy it is ulcerated and there is extensive scleral injection so that means now can you summarize these things this patient is having acute first of all okay and infective it is acute infective keratitis why i am saying keratitis because they themselves are saying that it is cornea which is edematous hazy and ulcerated and it is associated with the contact lens use so it is actually some infective keratitis which is associated with the use of the contact lenses yes or no so i know that when we hear this that there is some keratitis which is associated with the contact lenses the first idea that comes to your mind is the acanthamoeba yes 
the first thing that comes to our mind is the acanthamoeba keratitis but actually it is not now here you are fortunate enough because they are not given this as the option but otherwise i know that 90% of the people without reading much of the question they will go with acanthamoeba keratitis now i will tell you how this is wrong see when it comes to the contact lens user when it comes to the contact lens users the most common infection the most common infection that you expect in the people who are the contact lens users is the pseudomonas it is the pseudomonas okay then what about acanthamoeba it is the most important risk factor most important risk factor in the acanthamoeba in the acanthamoeba keratitis okay so it is other way around most important risk factor in the acanthamoeba keratitis is the use of contact lenses it is the use of contact lenses so these are two different statements and you should know how to use them if i i am uh, seeing one patient who is using the contact lenses and he has developed the corneal ulcer then the most important infection that is expected to be there in this patient is the pseudomonas but if the patient is already having this acanthamoeba keratitis and what is the most important risk factor in this patient then it is the use of contact lenses all right now look at the options here they have also given you past medical history for obesity chronic back pain asthma and acid reflux disease now this is again a skill you have to see what are the conditions what are the associated informations that you have to relate in this question and what is not required from their side they have given you the past medical history it is suggestive of obesity also chronic back pain also we have bronchopulmonary disease asthma we have acid reflux disease but it is not having much of the significant correlation in this of our case we are concerned with the thick yellow discharge which is present at the cornea as well as the lid margins and we are also concerned with the examination findings so the cornea is edematous it is hazy it is having ulcer and lot of scleral injection can you look at the picture here you can see whole lot of haziness in the cornea we have got a big corneal ulcer also so this ulcer is there and then you have got lot of scleral injection and then you have lot of scleral injection it is the acute red eye now the moment you say it's a acute red eye i want to remind you something where do you get this acute red eye where do you get this acute red eye so there are three important conditions where i can get this <coughs> acute red eye one is your the acute anterior uveitis which is provided in the options then i can have acute congestive glaucoma acute congestive glaucoma that is the second option and then the third is your acute bacterial acute bacterial keratitis acute bacterial keratitis now that means this patient is having acute red eye so what are the things i can think of as a dd this can be a case of acute anterior uveitis this can be a case of the acute congestive glaucoma and this can also be a case of acute bacterial keratitis now you have got a discharge okay so discharge is going in favor of what it is going in favor of bacterial keratitis you are not having discharge in uveitis you are not having discharge in the glaucoma second important thing the use of the contact lenses the use of contact lenses is again going in the favor of the bacterial keratitis it is not going in favor of uveitis or the glaucoma right so now let's see what are the other options they have given 
the angle closure glaucoma. Now, if this patient is a patient who is having the angle closure glaucoma, you always remember that the angle closure glaucoma is more common after 50 years of age. Then it is more common in the females. While here you have 32 year male, then I should have some occludable angle. They should have given me some history suggestive of occludable angle or he is having hypermetropia, shallow anterior chamber, something which is related with the mid dilatation of the pupil because what is the most important precipitating factor that brings the attack of angle closure glaucoma that is the mid dilatation of the pupil so they have not given me anything about the mid dilatation of pupil the narrowing of angle the shallow anterior chamber hypermetropia small eyeball small cornea so nothing of that sort as far as the age is concerned the gender is concerned not going with the glaucoma then there should be stony hard red eye it should be stony hard then i should have the colored hellos i should have the sudden closure of the angle of anterior chamber that will lead to the vomiting uh, the nausea colored hellos the walk stride so very clearly it is not a case of acute congestive glaucoma i hope you are getting how to rule out the things now the second is anterior uveitis when i talk about uveitis Okay, what is most common here? So, the earliest sign that you are going to get is the aqueous flare. So, if it is a case of uveitis, I should have the aqueous flare, I should have the aqueous cells, I should have the keratic precipitates. These are the earliest and the most important signs of the uveitis. Now, though there is one thing which can be associated with the uve uveitis and that is a chronic back pain. But this is not sufficient. Any other person can also suffer from chronic back pain and you do not have the history and examination which is very, very significant and diagnostic of uveitis. So, this is not the uveitis. Okay. Now, we have got two more options. One is pneumococcal conjunctivitis. Now, if I talk about the pneumococcus, pneumococcus is giving you a discharge which is grayish white. Pneumococcus is giving the discharge which is grayish white while in the question they are saying that the discharge is yellowish. Okay, so this is not the case with pneumococcus. Second important thing is that if it is a case of conjunctivitis, why will I get cornea to be edematous, hazy, ulcerated along with this extensive scleral injection? Then they have said that it is having a pain. So, most of the time, you know, the uh, conjunctivitis will not give you the pain. Conjunctivitis can be giving you discomfort. Now, you have to understand a clear cut difference between the pain and discomfort. A patient who has pain must be having the corneal involvement because that is involving the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve, that is the sensory supply of the cornea. Then it is the keratitis which is causing pain. Conjunctivitis is not an, or, or you can say it's very very unlikely to get the pain in conjunctivitis. You are getting so much of discharge. Clear cut they have said that the cornea is edematous, it is hazy, it is showing ulceration. So it's not a case of conjunctivitis. It is a case of keratitis. Now you are lucky enough that only option they have given you with the keratitis is the pseudomonas keratitis. So very clear cut your answer answer will be pseudomonas keratitis. It is a case of keratitis. Cornea is hazy, cornea is edematous, cornea is having ulcer. It's an acute condition. It's a painful condition. And you know they have given you the contact lens use and pseudomonas is the most common bacteria which is associated with the use of contact lenses. So, in this way, when you are dealing with the clinical scenarios, not only you are reading that particular topic about which that question is given, you are also undergoing the other three topics which you have to rule out. So, can you see in this question, we have quickly revised the findings of the angle closure glaucoma, acute anterior uveitis, conjunctivitis and then the pseudomonas keratitis and what is the most important thing? See, clinics is not 
only reading that particular topic. Clinics is all about differentiating the different things. The patient, if he is coming, what is the motto behind doing this? That they want us to become good doctors. So, if a patient is coming to me with these findings, he won't be giving us clue that uh, whether it is conjunctivitis or glaucoma or keratitis or uveitis, you have to have that clinical acumen that from these findings, what are the important things that you have to rule out? what are the things that you have to take into consideration and depending upon that you have to come to a diagnosis so it is all about the relative comparison between the four important things that you have to uh, keep it so that you are reaching to the right diagnosis so I hope you are very very clear in case of any doubt you people can always ping us on our social media platforms our Facebook groups and the telegram groups be safe be healthy and happy ophthalmology.